Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I'll continue a discussion of optimization that began two videos ago. In this current video, I'll present uh, optimization examples of a, of a new type. They are two variable applied max min problems. This material is from section 4.6, optimization. More specifically, it is similar to uh, content in the book on pages 304 to 307, examples 1 and 2. The corresponding homework is this collection of four problems. Two of them are in the MyLab system. Two of them are not. 34 and 36 are not in the MyLab system, but they are in the book, and they're, they're worth doing. And now remember that in section 4.6, we're, we're studying these problems involving optimization, which uh, simply means that they're max-min problems, but they may have complications. They may be presented as word problems about applications to real-world situations. You may have to figure out the function and its domain, and the domains might not be closed intervals, and the, um, the problems may involve more than one variable. Well, in the, the, the problems in this current video, we have a combination of all of those complications. These are applied problems, there are two variables, and we'll have to figure out the function and its domain, and in at least one of them, uh, well, actually, and in both of them, it turns out that do, the domain is not a closed interval. In the first example, a farmer needs to build a fence to make a rectangular corral next to an adjacent pasture. He only needs to fence three sides because the fourth side has already been fenced. He has 900 feet of fencing. The question is, what are the dimensions of the pasture that will enclose the largest possible area? All right, well, our solution should start by drawing a picture. So let's draw the, um, the existing pasture fence. And then let's draw the fence that the farmer needs to build. So the black line represents the fence that the farmer will build. The green line represents the existing fence. Now we need to uh, convert this stuff into math so that we can solve a math problem. So to do that, we need to introduce some variables. So let's put some letters on this, on this drawing. Now then, we have letters. We can uh, start to translate more of this uh, given information. So the fact the farmer has 900 feet of fencing, that means that the, the length of fence that he has is 900 feet. So let's make an equation that conveys that. So we have equation one that says 2x plus y equals 900. That's the translation into mathematical symbols of this circled sentence in the uh, paragraph above. Now, that's the only number appearing in the problem. But there is this sentence here. It mentions area. So that's, that's actually a quantity. So let's build an equation that expresses the area. So now we've got two equations, x times y equals a for area, and we should add that we want to maximize the area. So now we're ready to state an abstract math problem. So there's our math problem. Find positive numbers x and y such that this particular sum has the value 900 and their product is maximized. Well, realize that's the abstract math problem that was solved in the previous video in example one. Let's recall that solution. So we're trying, trying to find positive numbers x and y such that this particular sum was 900 and the product was maximized. In that, uh, in that example, we were not given the second equation. We were only given the first equation. So we identified this second equation, p equals x times y. We had equation one that was that particular sum that has a known value. 
So our method was we solved equation 1 for y in terms of x, and we got this. And then we substituted equation 1 into equation 2 and simplified to get a function, p of x, and we figured out its domain. And then using calculus, we found the value of x that maximizes p of x. We got that value. And then finally, we found the corresponding values of y and the product. So if we had not already done this math, we would go through these exact steps in the current example. We have the exact same starting point. We have an abstract math problem that's the same problem. Since we've already done this math, we can just cite these results. So there is our result. x is 225 and y is 450. Now in this problem, we, we were not given the letters x and y. So you, you can't just tell the farmer, make x equals 225 and y equals 450, because the farmer doesn't know what you're talking about when you say x and y. So you need to actually say what this x is. It's the length of the side that's perpendicular to the pasture fence, and the y is the length of the side that's parallel to the pasture fence. So again, it was good to introduce the variables x and y that, uh, that you use to solve the problem, but you've got to make sure that you ex explain what those variables stand for. Now we really should give the resulting area, so I'm going to shrink all this that I've written so that we have room for me to write the resulting area. So there's our result, x equals 225, y equals 450. Let's go on. In example two, a farmer needs to build a rectangular fenced chicken yard. He wants an area of 9,000 square feet. The fence on the west side of the yard must be wood, which costs $20 a foot. The fence on the other three sides, east, north, south, can be wire, which only costs $5 a foot. The question is, what are the dimensions of the cheapest fence, and how much does it cost? Well, let's start by making a drawing. So there's a drawing of the chicken yard. Now let's add dimensions. And then let's get to work translating the given information and the, and the problem into mathematical um, expressions. Well, this first sentence, area is 9,000 square feet, we can express with an equation. We'll call that equation 1. Now, what else is mentioned in this problem? The cost of the fence. We're looking for the cheapest fence. So we need another equation that expresses the cost. So the cost of the fence is going to be the cost of the north side, plus the cost of the south side, plus the cost of the east side, plus the cost of the west side. Now we can figure out those costs. It's whatever the lengths of those sides are times the, the cost per foot of the material for those sides. So that's what we'll call equation two. So our, our given word problem we can now re-express as an abstract math problem. So our problem is to find positive numbers x and y such that the product x times y is 9,000 and this particular sum 2x plus y equals c is minimized. Well that's the exact problem that we solved in the previous video in example two. In that example, we were asked to find positive numbers x and y such that the product had this known value, 9,000, and this particular sum is minimized. So we set up an equation one, which was the, expressing the known value of the product, and equation two, 
expressing the sum, which has an unknown value. We, we solved equation 1 for y in terms of x, and then we substituted equation 1 into equation 2 and simplified to get a function. We figured out the domain of that function. Using calculus, we found the value of x that minimized that, that function. We got that result, x equals 150. And finally, we were able to uh, find the corresponding values of y and the sum, and there they were. Well, if we had not already done this problem, we would go through these exact steps in the current example. Since we've already got this um, result, we can just quote the result. So there are our results. The length of the north and south sides should be 150 feet. The length of the east and west sides should be 60 feet. The resulting cost of the fence will be $3,000. So that's the end of that example. Now, before ending this video, I'd like to talk a little bit more about these two examples. Notice that both problems have a picture involving a rectangle with dimensions x and y. Both problems have uh, two equations, one involving a product and the other involving a sum. The difference is that in the first problem, the sum had a fixed value and we were trying to maximize the, the product. Whereas in the second problem, it was the product that had a fixed value and we were trying to minimize the sum. Now, notice the, the difference in the complexity of the resulting math. In the first problem, which had a fixed value for the sum and an unknown value for the area, the resulting function was a second degree polynomial. In other words, a parabola. So it was possible to reason that there would be a, a max, and uh, we found the critical number of the, for that function, and we knew that that was going to be the x-coordinate of that max. In the second example, in which the product had a fixed value, and we were trying to minimize the value of the sum, the resulting math was quite a bit harder. The resulting function was this unfamiliar form, 10x plus 25 times 9,000 over x. So that was not a familiar function form. We could not make an argument about the shape of that graph just uh, right off the bat. So when we analyzed that problem, it was much harder. The other thing that I want to mention is that although this may sound like a dorky contrived example involving a fence, it's actually a, a, a kind of problem that arises quite often in, in business situations. Uh, the, the underlying issue is that in this first problem, the farmer can choose where to put his resources. He can choose to put the resources into the x dimension of the corral fence or into the y dimension of the corral fence. In the second problem, the farmer can choose to put his resources into the x dimension of the, the, the yard fence or into the y dimension. Well, that idea of having a choice of two different places to spend your money uh, and then having to decide how to allocate your money to those two places in order to maximize or minimize something, that idea comes up quite often. So the reason for doing these fence problems is that this math is useful math. And when you do these fence problems, it's easy to visualize the math with the drawing. But again, the, the math is very universal, comes up a lot in a lot of different kinds of uh, basic business problems. All right, well, that's the end of these examples and the discussion. That's the end of the video. Thank you.